Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a whopping good new recording of Charpentier's Medea. Medea. Now, Medea, as you know, is one of the all-time great, fabulous, tragic, heroine, villain-type characters in all of opera. I mean, we just can't get enough of Medea, can we? You know, when I was doing um, music for for figure skating, like Olympic skaters and whatnot. I kept trying to get these skaters to do something really juicy. And one of the best pieces, because it's exactly four minutes long if you find the right performance, performance is Medea's Dance of Vengeance by Barber. You know, once it, once it gets going, you know, the hoochie coochie part, the rumba. And I could never get skaters to do it. It's like, stop doing Carmen or the Nutcracker or the Rachmaninoff 18th variation. Now they use pop music. Ugh. I mean, they could have done Medea, you know? Anyway, so here is Charpentier's Medea. It was composed around the 1690s or so, uh, 16, 1693. There we go. It's a tragedy and a prologue in five acts. The story is by Corneille, the French play, Corneille, which I read in French lit. It's really very good. It's a wonderful French tragedy. Um, and oh, is Medea something else in this opera? First of all, it's two hours and 40 minutes of fun. It's a seriously involved piece and the characters are very well fleshed out. And as the, the commentator here says, I mean, the commentator who's the guy who heads up the you know, Versailles, you know, Opera Research Institute or whatever that thing is called. Um, wait a minute, where is he? Here we are, Benoit Dratvitsky. Um, yes, that's the guy from the Centre de Musique Baroque de Versailles. Yeah, and he's the guy who's now saying, latest research says that they did use vibrato and that you should use regular operatic voices and that you shouldn't use continuo all the time, especially in the dances where it sounds stupid. Oh, yeah. So, you know, what goes around comes around, you period instrument folks. <laughs> and the evidence is right here at these and other performances that have been sponsored by the Centre du Baroque Musique de Versailles, or whatever I just said it was. I don't remember. Anyway, anyway, um, he points out, and rightly so, that this is one of the few operas of the period which really, which really withstands modern staging and modern expectations because the characters are really, really dynamic and fleshed out. And Medea is one of the great villainesses in all opera. I mean, she's amazing. I mean, just, just look at the, I mean, look at what happens at the end of the fourth act. She drives Crayon insane and he then dies because he goes mad and dies. He's trying to have her exiled, right? And then in act five, the juicy act, when she's getting her way with everybody. She had, takes Creuse, who's supposed to marry Jason, you know, her rival, and she has the, the, the poison robe thing, and she sets it on fire, and Creuse burns up and dies in Jason's arms, then she murders her own children, then she flies off in her, her chariot pulled by flaming dragons. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just hot stuff. It's really, really hot stuff. Now, it's been recorded a few times because of that, because of its, 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 uh, you know, the fact that it just works. It, you know, it's it, it's a typical opera of its period in the sense that it contains, you know, a prologue dedicated to like Louis the Fourteenth or one of those absolute monarch type peoples, and then four acts or five acts, pardon me, and the acts are through composed. It's music all the way through. Arias are relatively short, usually. Um, there are dances in the middle, you know, it's integrated into the thing. But what sets this apart is simply the the tightness of the action, the, the intensity, the focus on the principal characters, and the wonderful story that, that just moves. It just drives itself forward through the entire work. I mean, even though it's really quite long. And so uh, it's been recorded, as I said, a few times. Christie did it twice, once for Harmonia Mundi, once for Arado. Um, and this one has an amazingly fine cast. It's, it, it's the Concert Spirituel under Hervé Nike with a really, really good, big, juicy orchestra full of, you know, wonderful period instrument play players. Uh, the cast is terrific. You've got Véronique Jean as Medea, and boy, does she pull out all the stops. She's really good. 
um, and nice and vengeful and loving and tender and passionate and despairing. I mean, it's all about Medea. I mean, this opera, if Medea is not great, nothing else really matters, right? Uh, Cyril Dubois is Jason, and Judith Van Van Roy is Creuse, and Thomas Dolier is Creon, and lots of other people. I mean, it's got like lots of other people. It's a big cast, uh, and really an amazing piece. A brilliant, wonderful piece. It's the only opera that Charpentier, who wrote like five or six hundred pieces, the only opera that he wrote for the Academy Royale, which was, you know, the big, you know, the King's Opera Company, the big one. He did write other operas. Um, there's a particularly cheery one called Orpheus's Descent into Hell or something like that, which we'll talk about at a future time. It's just oodles of fun. But in the meantime, um, this is on Alpha, the Alpha label, and it's it's quite splendid. It really is. Now, I know uh, not all of you are opera fans, and there are conventions in this kind of opera, but it, it's powerful, wonderfully composed music. Um, it disturbed audiences at the time it was premiered. It was well reviewed because it was so, it was well received because it's just such a powerful drama. And because Cornet's libretto is gorgeous and it's, it's, it's a great story. So it was well received, but it didn't last. And it didn't last because I think people did not find that it was, it was a divertissement. It was really something that, that, that moved you, that had powerful stuff, um, disturbing in its way and and just brilliantly written and brilliantly performed here. So give it a shot. I, I you know, I mean if you're hesitating with French like baroque type opera thingies, then then you know, aside from Rameau and his stuff, uh, you got to have this one. It's absolutely de rigueur. So keep on listening friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care. <laughs>